Welcome one and all to this 24th episode of D&D with me Mike and me Zoe and today we're going to be keep we're going to keep working on our uh, chess so one thing we found is that we can pick up a bomb and throw it that all works but then once we open the chest get the glove that's inside which floats in our heads and then we hit OK to confirm that we can't pick up anything else anymore oops I've been caught so let's Except demonstrate that. The bomb wall. should appear here, do its thing, and I can't pick it up. All right? So let's fix that immediately. That will be the first thing we'll do. Now this is guaranteed guaranteed to be a code problem. Um, <clears throat> so my guess is that we forgot to unassign the uh, interacted item. Uh, therefore, the game says you still have an item you're interacting with. Uh, that's no good. blah blah all right, so open chest routine, collect item, interacting is false, yes, but my guess is the contextual interaction, current interaction object, right? So it's not null. Uh, TC collect item, uh, ah, that's for the treasure chest. We're not gonna deal with that there. We're gonna deal with it right here. So here we're gonna say um, current interaction object, I think it's called, so type current interaction object and say equals no or jaw that's much better no okay let's immediately go test you this, this should works. work <clears throat> that's my guess anyway and next what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if we've got the gloves equipped and deal with all of that logic. Right now the glove also appears in the UI. We need to turn that off until we get the glove. Yeah. Then when we have the glove, we're cool. We can make it appear. Yeah, and we can pick up the bombs and do things with them. It's kind of annoying that you always get stuck in walls. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so I've picked up the thing. The thing now is now gone. Try and pick him up. Yep, can do it. Done. So that fixes that problem. Um... All right, so since we're here, let's take a look at our old bugs because I know we have some more. Uh, we've written in there. Bombs explode, exploding while you're running away sometimes deal no damage. <sighs> That's the one that you had no idea about. Has that here still happened? Picking up enemy while it's spawning doesn't interrupt the spawn routine. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, Hmm, you simply shouldn't be able to pick up the enemy while it's spawning, maybe. Let's see. Uh, so the player has the interaction, blah, 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 enemy bomb, if E, aggressive. So let's go take a look if there's anything else. Set up. Set up, true. Uh, that's the setup, but there's also the growth routine, like the birth routine, and I don't think... Could be an enemy bomb? No, it depends on when this gets set up. So okay, hit control R twice, and call this one setup enemy. No, no, okay, add the word setup right here. Now hit enter. Save. <clears throat> so somebody's gonna call this, hit control F, Let's go to all open documents and there it is. So it sets it up immediately and then it grows up. Start spawn routine. Yeah, so here it's growing. The bomb and the enemy spawner is dealing with it, but the setup is happening first. So that doesn't quite help. Uh, it's not obvious to me what it is that we can do in order to yes. to deal with it. Let's see here. The enemy spawn start spawn routine. What does this do? Spawn routine. Wait, what? Spawn routine starts the spawn routine? Eh? eh? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. So, E awaken. That's the one. In Inside awaken. It says awaken in that and then start patrol. So it must not be aggressive. That's the first rule. 
But it yeah. also must be patrolling. And I don't think we have a patrolling state or anything like that. Which we could have. I think. Um, hmm. Let's add a state. Hide an inspector. Patrolling. No, we're gonna call it interactive. Public bull interactive. Copy bull. Paste it here. Save. Bull is a language. Um, but which has been deprecated. It's not supported anymore. It was supported in first versions of Unity. So copy interactive. It's by default false. Now as soon as we start patrol. Paste equals true. Semicolon. Comma. True. Uh -huh. And we need to check that it's interactive. So in the player, here you can go end to ends. Interact. E dot interactive. There. Save. So if the enemy is interactive, I drop the controller. If the enemy is in, so I'm pressing buttons here. Oops. If the enemy is interactive, then we can pick it up. Otherwise, we'll simply not do anything with it. So let's pick up this one. Track it that way. Wait for it to blow up. This one's gonna come this way and blow us up. Oh, blew up against the other bomb. I don't think it's hurt me. So I've picked it up now. But I'm pretty sure that counts as already spawned. No, I couldn't pick couldn't it up for a it. while. Until it was actually fully grown. That's right. Now let's see if it's gonna catch me and chase after me. Let's see? So that's too far to hurt me. That works. I really like the little climbing on the steps. So this guy did it. He doesn't notice us for like a month and I don't understand why. It's always him. Okay, so that hurt me. And that was right to hurt you. Yeah, I was within the area. And so was that and it yeah. worked. Exactly. And then we need to start again to see if it actually worked again. Yeah, worked all three times. Should f try and face different directions and see what happens. Maybe I don't know. Um, so one issue. Well, anyway, one issue is fixed. Yep. So we can remove this. Uh, picking up an enemy. Save. So this one we can't reproduce, but let's leave it there for now. Uh, one thing that definitely seems to be the case is that the awareness module doesn't pick us up. Yeah. Sometimes, I have no idea why. Um, let's add it here then before we forget. So control M O. Well, let's let's investigate it right now. So okay. on trigger stay. If the interactive entity is a player. Uh, no. If it, if enemy is not aggressive or enemy is not passive, we should also add if the enemy. Uh, yeah, so let's end. How to end. Do you... Oh, end. I heard. I thought end. And then enemy owner dot interactive. That's a new thing that we have. No, 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 no. Enemy owner. It's already there. The tab. Dot interactive. Tab. Okay, save. So we're going to detect player. Um. Here, type debug.log, open round, and go uh, to here. Okay. Save. So now we're gonna tell it don't maximize on play and immediately let's test that if it's working for detection of player. Okay, so I'm right there. The grass. So it's told me the, the here for a while. Yeah, except it didn't notice you for a while. Let's see. I'm gonna clear here. Okay, so, so somebody's noticing me. So the wall is probably interrupted. 
Okay, so it took a while. I think that basically those vision cones are there. See, it's saying here, and then it doesn't see me for a while. So something's going on, but we get here. Now, I don't know if these are correct. So here, and then uh, add plus and say copy, paste, space, plus, space, quote, space, hyphen, 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 space, quote, minus, 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 space, quote, space, plus, space, uh, copy, paste, I don't need because I missed it, uh, copy all of this, paste, copy this, paste, save. So let's see if all of these are performing correctly. There's only one problem. I'm not happy with um, the the setup. So let's change th this. Copy all of this. Paste it here. Dot name. And then copy this. Yeah, so that we know Paste what it's here. noticing. Save. So we'll see which bomb is doing this. And well, who is noticing what it's noticing? Not really, right? Because the enemy owner is the owner. It's not what it's noticing at all. Yeah. <clears throat> so, it's obviously noticing the player. They can only notice the player. So, okay. Enemy bomb false false true. Okay. So it was false false meaning not aggressive, not passive, and interactive. So it noticed us for a while before it went there. This means everything is working correctly. It means we're going to detect player. This is the issue. So let's check the way. Raycast, Raycast hit. Physics, Raycast, out, Raycast hit. If Raycast hit finds a player, then start aggression. So there's various possible. There's at least two possibilities here. One, this is false. The other one, this is... Uh, uh, this is false. So you, you've got either it can't find the player component on the player, that's one possibility, and the other possibility is it um, uh, it doesn't even hit anything. Okay, so okay. we're going to assume that it hits something, and here you're going to say debug.log open round raycast hit dot transform dot name close around semicolon so, so this is only one ray we're launching it could be that it's hitting something else and I don't know what not like else. say the, the awareness module or whatever I really don't know right so let's see now okay saw me right away so enemy bomb clone which was interesting that would mean it's noticing itself, right? Possibly. Player clone this time. No, but there's more with more than that. Yeah, so only player clone. The bomb saw the player. Okay. Keeps on seeing the player. Need to try and reproduce that thing. Okay, it said wall there, which is quite interesting. I think it was when you passed it. Okay, so again. it's saw a wall. So this time it took ages to, to notice me. And it says that it saw itself. Oh, well, it saw something. Okay, now it was fine. I think the problem is with that. Notice the wall and then noticed you seen the wall quite a lot so it's seen the wall again which should interrupt the view right mm -hmm. so hmm, but it could be the other bomb that's seen that okay what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, look at the ray we're gonna debug the ray okay um, comment this out maybe we might still need it no uh, so the problem is we're creating an array on the fly let's create it first 
So okay. here you want to type ray ray equals. Now Take stop all it of there. That. Copy all of this. Paste it here. Semicolon. Now copy this right. Paste it here. Save. Now here you want to say debug dot draw line open round and here you want to say paste dot origin comma paste dot direction times uh, wait let's see so here it's transfer position dot up and the direction is transfer dot position I'm surprised that there's no distance but it's fine it shouldn't matter so copy this um, no that's already the direction so let's multiply that by 5f comma comma space color dot color dot red capital C that was control C comma uh, no no comma just this let me call and save now copy all of this and here you go else open square paste it and go color dot uh, green mm -hmm. save and we're gonna make another change cut this paste it here else open a squiggle paste again yellow save all right so what this means save again what this means is if we we create the ray we cast the ray yeah if we hit the ray if we don't hit the ray let's go here first then we're gonna go we're gonna draw a ray that's green if we do hit the um the the player well if we hit something and the something we hit is the player we're gonna go red if we hit uh, anything else other than the it, player it would go yellow well or we hit something that doesn't have the player on it uh so let's see how that goes now we should already see a line I well can't. no because we're not colliding with the thing Don't see the line. Yeah, I don't see it either. Maybe it's because. No, there should be no because. I ate that. Look at our little fella. He happily. Are you looking at the scene or the other one? Yeah, so I can't see. Oh. oh I saw it. It was I saw, yellow. I saw something as well, but that looks well wrong. So that yeah, was it quite looked like it was going through the bomb. Yeah, like that ray is somewhere else entirely. It's probably somewhere, but I can't see it at all. Uh, which is interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at what our ray is. Transform dot position. That's the enemy's position. Yeah. Vector three dot up times point five. And it's the direction between the player transform the position minus transform dot position okay well that's kind of silly depending on height because we remember we got that height problem but anyway hmm that's annoying I'd like to see that ray either way and it should appear well I mean it only appears if you call detect player really um, do me a favor and let's compact this a little bit because I find it really uncomfortable. We to don't read. need it now. Yeah, now that we've made it a lot more tiny, tiny, that should work a lot nicer. Okay, save. So no, that's better. I don't understand why the ray isn't drawing. It's transfer the position. I'm fairly sure is correct. Vector three that up should be correct. The direction between the player's position. And the transform dot position. That should be also correct. Where's the ray? Ray origin, ray direction. Everything should be fine. We should at least see it. 
Why did you put times 5f? It, just to give it a length. Just to give the ray a certain length so we can see it. I mean, almost certainly that's incorrect. It's like too long, but whatever. I'm not interested. I just want to see it there. So there should be I a ray. I saw a flash of red. You did? Yep. I did not. Um, there was a line that was completely like out of the scene. Not too far from it, but still out. There was a yellow one. Yeah, I saw the yellow myself. Uh huh. That was yellow again. Yeah, but did you see where it pointed? Pointed in another direct in the direction. Completely different direction. So that was there, interesting. You stopped at right. So the that's time interesting. So the direction it's pointing to, it's kind of wrong, big time. Okay, so let's do another th silly thing. Uh, there is no fixed update, but let's create one really quickly. So go void fixed update. No, no, yeah, that's it. Huh? We're good. Oh, it, it did just, it by itself. Yeah, so you may have pressed space or whatever. Copy this, paste it here, and copy this, paste it here in black or bulk okay now let's see this should literally happen all the time we may get an null ref okay so all of the bombs are pointing this way the consistently by the way they're just moving a little bit well, clearly we're getting wrong directions big time. Yeah. Right, which is interesting. So, game manager, trans player, transform position. Okay, so let's test it again and let's try move about. See if that, that line changes. Yes. So the lines are moving, right? If I go for a swim, you see that they are shifting slowly, but they are moving. Right? Mm -hmm. They are moving now. The further left I go, the more they move towards the corner. And you can see that. Right? So yeah. now they're in the corner. Now they're going above. Well, top of the corner or whatever. So we're getting some interesting problems. But I'm not sure I can understand what's causing them. Because the enemy is correct. Like that's the correct formula to get a direction. That's so odd. <clears throat> I know why. Copy this. The debug is wrong. Copy this. Paste huh? it. Plus. Save. Copy this. Here we go. Paste Stick it, here. it everywhere else. And here. And here. Save. Let's see if this is now correct. It should be. And then we'll actually be able to test. Okay. They're staring they're at us. They're looking at us. Right? So they're staring at us, but there's something interesting going on. The ray is being interrupted. Now, in the water should be normal, but outside the water it's abnormal. So let's take a look at what the, this, this bomb's ray is looking like. And that's it. No, that's it. Not not really, actually. So it's all correct now. The direction's fine. It's at the correct height. It's kind of hard to see, obviously, but it is at the correct height. Now let's go to the water. Okay, it's correctly pointing down. Yeah. Right, so if I jump, I think we're going to see... It bounce. There. Yeah, so it did. He went up. True. Okay, so that's that's all just fine, really. Look at the other ones. No, we'll see you right away. Yeah. As you know, that's not necessarily indicative of correctness. It's still working fine now.
Okay, so that definitely took some time. Yeah, it turned yellow and then it turned. <laughs> I really like her little jumps. They're fun. Like the animation you can see from here. <sighs> Splash. <laughs> Seems very eager to get into the water. Seems very eager to get anywhere. Yeah, that's kind of true. Oh, see that? It was yellow for a while. And he ignored us. I did not see that. Yep. Yeah, now I saw it, yep. So it's yellow for a while and he ignores us. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Yellow. Yellow means it he doesn't see the player. Different. It sees something different that is not the player. What does it see? Here, put a debug.log. Open right. Uh, yeah, and here you type Raycast hit. I love the capitals. It's always a variable, or almost always a variable. Tab dot name. A uh, dot transform dot name. <clears throat> Hello, Zed Doctor. We're doing our show, so I usually don't talk much to the crowd. Semicolon. Save. All right. Now let's see if we can try and repro that. As as you've seen, it's a bit finicky to do. So. Yeah. Um. Oh, splish. He looks good from this camera angle. The game? Oh, this yeah, the game looks good from the scenes camera angle. Yeah, it's something we should probably consider. So the other bomb, when it sees us, obviously it's staring at the wall. That so makes it's sense. yellow. There. Ah. Uh, so. Where is it? Yeah, well, staring? the problem is this silly bomb over there is actually seeing us too. Hmm. I get the impression that it's so a bomb. Okay, we got hurt. Um, I'm annoyed at that bomb because it sees us. So, enemy bomb clone. Does the enemy bomb actually have some kind of ID? Because that, that could come, that could be handy. You know? Yep. Bomb spawn point, bomb spawn point. Enemy bomb clone. Bomb spawn point. Respawn wait. Enemy bomb hell. No, it doesn't have an, an ID of sort. <clears throat> Which is not great. Uh, but, uh, at least like this we can see it's... Um, it's vision cone. Yeah. It's out of its vision cone. No, it was inside. When you see the yellow thing, it it's clearly inside. Oh, so the collider is bigger? What? What are you talking about? Because if it was, when it was yellow, oh, I'm pretty sure I had seen it. Okay. But to get a wrong there. direction. But see? Yeah. In yellow? And apparently, it sees an enemy bomb clone. It sees an enemy bomb. What? So does it hit itself? With the ray? That's not entirely impossible, but it is... Unlikely. Seems very strange. So, let me see here. It did say enemy bomb clone, definitely. So... That's the one. Yep. Now let's see its structure. So there's this. And there's the model. The shadow models. Okay, fine. Those don't, those shouldn't matter. At least I don't think they do. Body. No, they all have only renders. No colliders. So that's not happening. It's not you. Explosion circle. No colliders. It's not you. Vision cone. So the vision cone does have a collider. Now, is it possible that it's hitting this one? It shouldn't. Well, hmm, the ray could be hitting this thing in many situations because the ray doesn't actually distinguish, like it doesn't filter for anything. See here? It says out ray, ray cast hit, it doesn't say what the layer mask is. Mm -hmm. And so that could kind of be the issue. Let's give this a shot. Whoa. So it should hit anything other than um, the vision cones. 
So let's take a look here in the game manager. We got these. So surface layer. These are our surfaces. Map obstacle enemy player explosion check layer. Map obstacle player enemy. We could go to explosion check layer for the ray, ray as well. So you can't hit your own self. And I'm not sure, but I think that the bomb enemy bombs layer is going to be interesting because the vision cone is going to be in a different layer, enemy awareness. Yeah. So we can probably utilize explosion check layer. So let's do that. And here type game manager dot script dot explosion check layer dot explosion check layer. This was supposed to be save. This was supposed to be another stream, well, video about uh, treasure chests, but now it's turning into a debugging video, <laughs> which got very little to do. Fixing bug video. Yeah. It's all right. It's got to be done. Okay, so it notices us immediately. Let's find out if we're gonna get the same problem again. So it saw us immediately. I have a suspicion that we may have fixed it. I'm not certain, but. There she goes, enormous. Yeah, so as soon as I enter the cone, it instantly sees me. Yeah. And I suspect it was hitting its own awareness module. Yeah, yep. see, it saw you me immediately. Raise the cone and it's a. Uh, Try the other bombs, maybe? Well, this one was the only one that was causing us issues. Ah! It saw me for a bit and ignored me. Wait, we may not have fixed it. Oh, look at the explosions. They're remaining there on the scene. Hmm? The explosions are still on the scene. We didn't create ah, a yeah, PFX self-manager. We should fix that. After we fix this. Well, I think it took time to rotate itself. Yeah. Oh, that could be a possibility. No, See, it sees me right away. Yeah, we definitely need to do something about the explosions. And that's kind of urgent because it's going to be a problem very soon. When things are exploding like crazy. Well, there's too many PFXs that we didn't manage. This is going to be an issue. Huh. So it saw me for a small brief period. And then it, it went crazy. Did you see that? Yep. So it missed me that for was ages. a long time. And enemy bomb clone. There's a wall. Yeah, well, it keeps on seeing the enemy bomb clone. So listen, I'm annoyed at the fact that we can't use the names. This is really b stupid. So um, let's do a few fixes. Uh, number one in our map setup, like the map when it's summoning like creating all the entities and all the pieces right it should give names to stuff so the map tiles that's good uh the map entities that's good but the bombs that are being spawned those aren't given names and that's annoying we want names okay so uh the enemy spawner here instantiate an enemy sets up the enemy transform position spawn angle etc let's also uh, give it a name right here. So you can say e dot transform dot name name equals and so the spawner has a name. I don't think it's got coordinates or anything like that. So let's give it uh, well we don't know what it's spawning do we? Uh, I suppose it's gonna be somewhere here. No, because that's the side by decided by that. Start spawn routine, stop spawn, instantiate spawn template. There it is. So that thing. So we're gonna say spawn template dot name dot name plus quote underscore close close quote plus um, transform dot name so we're giving it our own name yeah semicolon uh, no. save so you're giving the bomb the name of the spawner which is unique so that's gonna help us already so that's one thing 
Okay. Um, another thing. There is a self manager. What? Oh. Isn't that interesting? So we had a PFX self self manager. Do we not have it on our on our prefab PFX? It's there. We've it got it. It does have it. Okay, that's weird. So start coroutine play. PFX play while PFX is playing. You return null. You'll return new wait for seconds one. Destroy game object. Okay. Well, this should happen. So as long as it's playing, do nothing. Then, then it should destroy the object of the one second. Why in the world is this not working as it should? Hmm. It's a little odd. Uh, let's take a look at the thingy. Oh, looping. Yeah, that's the one. That's the problem. It was looping forever. So it's dead. Which is strange. But because I didn't see it. But never you mind. Okay. At least it's fixed. Yeah, maybe the loop takes ages or something. That's weird. That's definitely weird. Okay, so. Let's get. Let's blow up this bomb now. Okay, so it should see me for ages, but it doesn't. It sees itself. It sees itself. Is this a problem with the physics engine? Uh, no. Well, I know what the issue is, I think, is that we're casting the ray from inside ourselves. And so we need to set Which is odd, because I thought this wouldn't be a problem. But So what we're going to do is we're going to push it out a little bit. Um, and let's go do that right now. So inside the enemy... Oh, by the way, this fixed update is now unnecessary. You can yep. save. Okay, so transcend up position, plus factor 3 up. That's not good. We're going to add a thing as well. So right here, you want to create a uh, vector 3 and call it call it dir, D-I-R. Yeah. No, uh, we're going to give it a value. Copy this. Go equals, paste. Save. So this is the direction we already saved it. Copy the direction, paste it right here. Save. Now here, you're going to do plus, paste for dir. Uh, and then dot normalized yeah it's already there times 0.6 f I don't remember how large say how large the bomb is but it should be 0.5 so we're pushing it out by a little bit more so that we have we don't hit it yeah, we don't hit ourselves yeah that should guarantee it but I'm not certain. We saw it red almost immediately. So I don't see it ever detect itself. It sees the wall sometimes. But it doesn't matter if it sees it the It shouldn't detect itself. So, hmm, there's a thing. I would still like to see how that raid looks like. Because like this, we see it too rarely. So, retype void fixed update. Should we really just... Um, we can't undo because yeah. then you're losing this work. Yeah, they're on yet. So, yeah, that's it. Just delete private, save. And now, copy all of this paste it here and copy this paste it here black black not dark this time okay and then we're gonna go back to our treasure chest because I think we fixed it okay so they're all staring at us nice and happy this guy saw me immediately you can see the ray is starting from his nose so it's not starting directly from him. Do you understand the math behind what I've done? Not really. All right, let's take a look. I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Yeah, it's working. It's working perfectly fine. Good. Okay, I'm fairly confident we fixed it. <clears throat> and now we're gonna take a look at the map. Math first, let that. me delete this, save. All right, so uh, here, we have a direction, right? The direction is always calculated by whatever you want to go to and wherever you want to go from, subtracted from wherever you want to go to, right? So you want to go to the player from where we are right now. Yeah. That's the direction. 
Okay, remember that a vectors, vectors have a direction and a magnitude. In the case of the direction, we don't care about the magnitude at all. Okay. It's just the direction. It's, it's, we, we are not interested in how strongly it goes in the direction. So, for example, if the player is 700 miles away, that direction is going to be a really long vector with really high magnitude. Mm -hmm. If you're really close, it's going to have a really low magnitude. But I'm not interested in the magnitude because the magnitude is essentially irrelevant for my ray. I cast it all the way to infinity every time in this yeah. particular case. Okay, so then we create the ray. The ray normally went from my position elevated by half. So the center of the bomb. Right? Mm -hmm. But now I added something. I added the normalized direction. Now normalized turns the magnitude of whatever direction to one. So you get only a pure direction. You don't have a magnitude anymore. Well, you have a magnitude of one, the default magnitude. So it doesn't matter where it's pointing, it's always gonna be one. This is really useful because then you can multiply it by any number what, what, what that you want. And we did do that. And we do do that. Now, if you take a certain vector three, which in Unity can describe many things, but in this particular case points in space, I'm going to draw it for you so you understand. Uh, file new this, and now let's add one. Then let's grab black, go all the way down to five. So this is your bomb, this is your player. Your player has a center, your bomb has a center. Yep. Okay, so first of all we get the direction, which gives us about this. I deliberately drew it here, right? Because the direction doesn't care about where you start from. Okay, but you get in this position, let's call it T, and this position, let's call it B. Well, I suppose we're gonna call this one P as player, right? So you do mm -hmm. it by doing P minus B, the target minus the starting point. Now to the starting point, we elevated it a bit from ground, that's not that important. So we've got this particular thing, which traces this thing, well, this thing, right? Mm -hmm. This vector, so let's put it here. And it's got a certain magnitude, right? Now, if you normalize the vector, the magnitude becomes 1. The direction remains untouched, but the magnitude is always 1. Okay? okay. If you then multiply this by something, in our case, we did it times 0 0.6. Yeah. Because the scale of the bomb is 0 0.5, the radius, right? Mm -hmm. 0 0.6 should be somewhere here, right? Now, if you account that this is a collider, this should be far enough to not interact with the collider as an origin point. Yeah. So I said, okay, I want you to take this position, mm -hmm. add the direction multiplied by 0. 0.6, meaning I now give you a magnitude of 0. 0.6, should reach over here. And start. Use okay. this as the starting point of my radius. Then, excuse me, of my ray. And then use this starting point and use the direction, irrespective of magnitude, to shoot in infinity. If you hit a wall, then you don't see the player. Mm -hmm. If you don't hit a wall, then you do see the player. But what you're never going to hit... It's yourself. Is yourself. Does that make sense now? Yes. Good. All right. So uh, that's done. We can now go and clean up all of these debug logs. Because we so, don't need them anymore. That's right. So this else completely unnecessary. Um, this else completely unnecessary. This unnecessary. All of this unnecessary. There should be another one right here unnecessary. And it should be every debug log cleaned up. Let's quickly check that the debug logs are cleaned up and then we go back to our treasure. We uh, have to make the gloves not be there and then. That's right, get player there. cannot have. Well, I've been detected immediately. Yep. Which is perfect. And let's take a look at the explosion clone here. Okay, it went away this time. It takes ages, but that's fine. We went At away. least it went away. Yes. Uh, it wasn't going away because it was looping forever, theoretically, anyway. So. <clears throat> I drank. <laughs> all right, so. For our player, first of all, let's take a look at the setup. So what do we have in our player? We got infrastructure, we got rules. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, state, current interaction object, interacting, down terrain, state, etc. Now somebody must have the power-ups. Okay, there are the pickups. And there's a glove. 
Um, I don't think we have a power up for excuse me I'm an enum enum for player attributes or something like that. Do we have? Aha, uh -huh. character there it is. attributes. Okay, so max HP, spawn cords, etc. Now create another public here. Call it boo. Uh, hmm. Maybe stats. Well, I'm thinking whether we should have a list of these or not. So, sure, create a public list of, and now wait, because we haven't created one. So let's create another public enum here. It's going to look remarkably similar to the previous one, but it's not, or a public enum. Okay, and call this one, uh, Permanent power up. Power up. Open a squiggle. Hit enter twice. And now copy this thing. Paste it here. Save. Alright, so permanent power up. And it's going to be copy this. Permanent power ups. Paste it. Close the type. And call it list underscore. Permanent power ups. No. Mm -hmm. Permanent power ups. Permanent n n n n n n n n. There's too many n n n. The permanent. Permanent six power ups. Semicolon. Say. All right. Let's go look for this character attribute. So Rest. player attributes. Wait a second. So hit Control F. One. All right, so start load profile, instantiate player, player attributes, punt cords. Okay, so that's good. Where are the other player attributes? Save profile, player attributes, fine, whatever. Uh, load profile, we're gonna leave that alone. Load the fold profile. Uh, the fold player attributes, okay, that's fairly important. The list is going to be empty, that's good. Um, so I don't see anything else. Um, what we need to do at that point is when we pick it up is we need to tell our player attributes that we have this new attribute mm -hmm. okay so there should be a collect a thing somewhere here uh, TC collect item um, TC open chest so all of this is good but do we know what the chest contains uh, and here it's never so animate open chest we're gonna need that add item to player stats that's, that's where, the one we, we need to, to we need to do but that means collect item should give us some information back so instead of public void what we're gonna do is call it public pickup so copy pickup paste it here save so st st stop open destroy pickup game object sure that's fine but here you're gonna say return and you're gonna return pickup type Paste, semicolon. So now we know what we're picking up. That's right. Now the player can go and do create a new variable called it pickup type. Yeah, that, that's the one. That's yeah, pickup. Wait. Pickup is good. Tab, call it pu equals. Whoops. There. Save. And now do switch. Tab, two tabs. Uh, too late now. Uh, it wasn't too late, turns out. But so just type SW tab tab, okay, and type PU and hit enter again. Okay, so we only worry about the glove for now. Save, and now it's gonna go to game manager, um, public void. Uh, add to inventory open pick up PU close open save okay and now what you're gonna do now is player profile or player attributes it's called yeah player attributes dot 
list permanent power-ups dot add open ramp oh we don't know actually um we don't know uh, because it depends on which pickup if you have say a rupee then it doesn't add it to the power up so here type switch as you did before w tab tab pu enter enter okay so if it's a glove cut this paste and here you're gonna type whoop well oh, sorry oh my, my bad really okay so copy this permanent power up paste it here dot glove close the round semicolon save okay so that's pretty good now we've added that to the list there's one risk that the list hasn't been initialized it's very possible that it isn't initialized so um, one thing that is a bit of a worry this um, let's see what possibilities we've got so player prefs that's fine we don't care about that at the moment uh, load profile load default profile there's loads of options here and uh, yeah I'm a bit worried here because it could very well be that this one has never been initialized so then if we're checking it or whatever uh, we may not get the answer we want Okay. Um, if you look for, for example, if the list contained, but the list hasn't been initialized, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if load default profile is being called. Um, type debug.log and go, yeah, here, or default, type quote default, close the quote, close the round semicolon. And copy this entire thing, paste it here, and go to load. Save. All right. Let's see if we get load or default or neither, which is all all three scenarios are possible. Okay, so we got load, uh, which means it has found it. Uh, so if any of these is missing, it's going to load. Now let's quickly hit the minus key, which deletes the local profile. Save deleted. And now let's hit play, should default load. Well, I should do both actually, load default, okay, good. So now that it's loaded the default and we know we can expect the default profile to be loaded, um, I just realized something. We can't actually save this information. Because uh, we don't have a saving system. Well, we do have a saving system, but the saving system is very weak. Uh, it's using the player prefs, which allows us for, are you ready for this? Three types of saves. Float, int, and string. You can't even save a bool. Well. <laughs> you can't save a list of ints. There's loads of things you cannot save. Really annoying. Okay, we're not going to create a clever saving system now. That's too complicated for your skills at the moment and too involved, right? But we can possibly create a string of some sort that stores that information and then loads that information. Okay, so let's do that. So let's see player spawn x, player spawn. See, in this particular case, we couldn't save a vector 2. Okay, we had to save one float and then another float. <laughs> well, in our case, we did it with ints, but the point is that was the issue, right? So here we're going to say if open round player press dot has key mm -hmm. open round quote uh, permanent power ups. Well, player permanent power-ups. Player permanent power-ups. Ups. Quote. Close two rounds. Open a squiggle. Hit enter twice. Close it else. And you know what to do. Save. Okay, so now here we're going to have to uh, in, first of all, initialize the player attributes list. So let's copy all of this. 
paste equals new. Yeah. And open close around semicolon. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna separate a string. And okay. for each, so the way we're gonna separate it is a bit complicated. So what you wanna type now is string array. Array. Mm -hmm. And call this one PUs, PUS. 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 Do you know what pus is? Yes. Okay, it's pus. Like equals. the infected thing. And what you wanna do is you wanna do uh, player prefs dot. Yeah, dot get string. Uh huh. Uh, open round quote. Uh, player that uh, this thing copy paste close the quote close the round. So we got the string, but that's not good enough. We need to separate it. So you go dot split. I don't know we do this. Dot split open round. And now you want to type single quote, not double quote, so without shift. Yeah, single quote, apostrophe basically. And now put a comma. Close the single quote. Close the round. Uh, semicolon. Save. So what split does is it will split the string in question into an array of strings based on the character you give it. Okay. Okay. So suppose your content has the word glove in it and no comma. You're going to get an array of one with the word glove in it. But suppose you have glove and then boomerang with a comma between them. It's going to use the comma as a separator. You're going to get a, str a string array of two strings. The first one being glove, the second one being boomerang. boomerang. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So now we've got this list. Now what we can do is you can go four and hit tab twice. And copy pass, paste it, dot length, tab, save. So we're going through the list of strings that we got. And we are going to... Hmm. Should we save them as numbers instead? It would be a lot easier to deal with. So, meaning, instead of saying glove, comma, boomerang, comma, whatever other powers we ever come up with, if instead we said zero, because glove is zero, comma, one, because boomerang is one, yeah. or boomerang could be six, right? So it would be zero, comma, six, right? Mm -hmm. That that allows us to parse these as ints. I'm going to show you yet a new one that you've never seen before. Okay. So here you type int, oops. Not that. Int and call... Okay, mate, what's your issue see here? Do you not know what an int is? Thanks. Uh, so here you type P-U-I-D, PUID. Okay, so power up ID, semicolon. Save. And here you're gonna say PUID. PUID. Equals. And it's gonna be int dot parse. Yeah. Does Tab. parse mean the same as split? No, parse. Uh, let's say that the word parse means order or read. If I tell you to parse some text, uh, it means I want you to read through it okay. uh, and analyze it. So you're going to parse and you're going to parse pus square bracket i. Close square bracket, close the round, semicolon. So what this does is essentially, you know to string, how it converts anything to a string? Yes. Yeah, that's a default method that exists in essentially every class within C Sharp. Okay. okay? Uh, the reverse is more complicated. So what we're doing here is we're instead taking whatever text we've got mm -hmm. and telling it, hey man, you're a number. So it's going to take the text and it's going to convert it into an, into an int. Problem is, if you feed it a wrong thing, like the letter G, it's going to say, uh-oh, and crash. That's yeah. why try parse exists. 
Try parse is a thing that allows you to catch an error and then ignore it or do whatever you want with it. Now we are going to assume it's numbers because we can trust ourselves to put numbers in there and nothing else. Yeah. Okay. So um, PID try parse uh, PUS if the length is zero, meaning we get absolutely nothing. Eh, that's not true. You could get an empty. You could get an empty, you'll get an empty at, at the start. So here, make it an if. If, open round, uh, pus i is not empty. Quote, quote. Not empty, potato, quote, quote. Another quote. Close the round, open a squiggle. Wait, okay, cut. Put it here, save. So do this only if you don't have an empty string because if you have an empty string that's not a number and we need to prevent this crash at the beginning you do not have uh that stuff so let's see here and uh otherwise cut uh, copy this and paste it here so load save load default profiles now uh, profile that's default attributes um Ah, here we're not done yet. So we're getting the PUID and now we're gonna have to add the permanent power-ups. So copy all of this, paste it here and tell it dot add, open round and say, uh, open another round to cast, permanent power-up. Oops. Just type, it's fine. Just type permanent power-up, permanent, there it is, tab, close the cast and then put PUID because it's a number ID close the round semicolon save all right so you're going to add permanent power up now to the list one thing we should okay here it's created as new I'm happy with that that's for loading I'm happy with that that's all good so the list gets reset and then this is done here all we're going to say is we're going to say player attributes actually you don't even need to do that just copy this thing paste it here save now save profile we also need to go massage uh, because it's missing that part so here you're gonna say player prep oh, we're gonna need some other stuff first so here you want to type uh, string and call this one uh, player PP PPUS power ups equals empty semicolon save. So we start with an empty string. Now we're gonna loop through the player attributes. So here four tab tab, and we're gonna go player attributes. Let's a permanent up. Perhaps copy this, paste it here. Dot count. So you're going through the list of permanent power ups. Yes. Okay, and here you're gonna get the a number of each of them. So you're gonna say, copy this, paste it, plus equals, no, plus equals. Copy this entire thing here, paste it, i, dot to string. Open, close around, semicolon. So there's a problem here, which is we don't know where to add commas, because we need to add commas between the numbers. Otherwise you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five, etc. And that's not good because you can't separate them. So we need to add mm -hmm. commas. Problem is we should only add commas if this is not empty. Okay. So here you're going to say if open round PPUS is not empty. Close. Open a squiggle. Hit enter twice. Close it. Copy this. Paste it. Plus equals. Plus equals. Comma. Quote. Comma. Comma close quote semicolon so you're adding a comma only if ppus before was not empty and we're still going through the loop so, so there's something to add mm. so the okay. first cycle this will not happen this will happen then when it goes to boomerang first it adds a comma then it adds the number for the boomerang problem is permanent power-ups is a word cast this is an int so open a round bracket open it again actually before you cast it int close the round bracket and now close it here, save. Okay, so it's gonna make it into a number first, 
and then turn it into a string and add it to ppus. Now here you go dot set string. Open around. Now wait. Copy all of this. Paste it here, comma ppus. Close the round. Let me call it save. All right. So this is a bit convoluted, but it is the only way to use the player prefs to say things correctly. So here it's going to save that you have a glove and whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. But the way it does it is it takes your list of power-ups, okay, which is an enum with enums in it. it. Takes those enums, turns them into ints. Then now you have numbers, say zero for the glove, right? Then it mm -hmm. says, okay, I want zero to be read as a string. So to string turns the zero into an actual text, okay? And then yeah. it adds that to a string. Then it puts commas and adds as many other numbers as you've got. And then it says, awesome, I'm done. I'm gonna give this string to the saving system. Now, when I'm reading the saving system, mm -hmm. which is here when I'm loading, right? I'm creating a new list to, f to fill up. Then I'm separating all of the things by comma. Then I'm going through all of them. And whenever I find one that isn't empty, that has been separated, right? I'm going to uh, I'm gonna turn that into an actual number, the PUID. And then I'm going to feed that to my permanent power-up. So I'm going to populate the list that way. Mm -hmm. Save. And that's it. So that should all work now. The lead profile will do will do its thing. No problem. Add to inventory. Uh, that's good. Okay, so now let's go back to the player. And you don't even need this anymore. Simply say, and you don't even need this pickup PU. All you're gonna do here is you're gonna tell this guy game manager dot script dot add to inventory, open round, close round. That's it, save. So we're feeding it the collect the, the result from collect item. In this case, it will be a glove. Now, mm -hmm. one thing we need to also do is we need to request that the UI is updated. Now, I don't recall who requests that or how it looks like. So let's go find the UI manager. There it is. And it's got setup HUD and update HUD. Hit Control F. Yeah. Or hit just F. Control F. All right. Set up attributes in the player. Take damage. Okay. So let's it. copy this entire thing. And right after the open chest routine, add player item to the stats, paste it here. Save. So update HUD. Now the HUD, we need to go and take a look at how it works. Because we have only, we're only dealing with the health units. And instead, we have other problems now that we need to worry about, mm -hmm. which is the images for all of the other stuff. So here, do a serialized field private private game object object um, and space and call this one um, permanent power up and just permanent power ups semicolon make it into an array say all right so we're gonna have to remember the order of them okay okay and what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna have to go and read those attributes in the game manager let's see if those player attributes are accessible they are. So we're going to say uh, for tab tab and copy this permanent power ups dot length and yeah, tab. And here you're going to say permanent copy paste i dot set active. Okay, open round. And now we need to check if the list of the player attributes, so you need to go to game manager dot script dot player attributes dot list dot script dot player attributes a yeah, dot list yeah dot contains open round 
And now we need to ask it what it contains, and that'll be I, but cast is a permanent power up. So, permanent power up. I. Semicolon. Um, There's a bracket expected. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, wait a moment. Contains I. Close the round. Save. So, if it doesn't contain it, it will set it inactive. If it does contain it, it will set the glove active. So then. we'll turn it off and on. Right. So save now. So all of them will be turned off or on, depending on that situation. At the moment, we only have one. That's fine. Right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the UI manager, which should be in the canvas. Okay. So your canvas permanent power-ups has one at the moment. Yeah. Now we need which to tell it glove. which one. Okay. So it's going to go to equipment, glove. There. And now it will turn it on or off, depending on that situation. So save now. When the game starts, we should get it off. And it's off. Right? So that's good. Now when we go and pick it up and actually hit A to make it go away, it should become part of our inventory. Are you ready for this moment of truth? Yes. Now, at the moment, we can still pick up the bombs, whether we have a glove or not. We will change that momentarily, like as soon as we're done with this, and then we're done for the night. So, look at the UI on the right. There's nothing. The glove would appear. Press A. There it is. Yep. Now we have the glove. I'll show you another problem. When we restart, we have the glove right away. Oh, we don't. Which means it works. Uh, no, which means it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, we need to keep the saves. It does. It doesn't work. So I mean, there may but be you many said it possibilities. Was a problem, so it, it may be po various possibilities why that's happening. So let's quickly try to take damage. See if that fixes it. No. But oh, I didn't take damage. Now, now I did. did. Dang. Okay, so we've managed to reproduce the problem with the damage. Um, let's quickly write it down. You did it by running into it while it was flashing. That's right. So, uh, bug possible not to take damage from bomb if running into it as it's about to explode. Okay, so that's that's one problem, uh, and we're gonna we wrote it down. So there's an issue; it doesn't actually load correctly. We should worry about this now rather than later. So let's see what the situation is here. So theoretically, resets the list. Fine, mm -hmm. and here we're gonna get this. So let's immediately debug dot log uh, pass dot length. Uh, oh, I think I know. We forgot to save. We forgot to save the profile when we add something to the inventory. That's what happened. And now it should be Now fixed. it will be broken. <laughs> Correctly. <laughs> okay, so we can fix it? Well, but the problem is that we start always from the beginning. Right? So mm -hmm. uh, we what we should do is we should simply tell the game to always load the default settings for now. Right? So... Um, Even if you were hurt at the time. Off you go. See you later. So now, oh, I have the glove. Okay, now if I stop and launch it, we should have the glove already. And we do. That's exactly as it should be. Wrong, but it says it should be. Why so, is it wrong? Is well, because you are not loading, you're loading a save file, but you're not teleporting in the right place. Yeah. Right? I mean, I suppose it's fine thing is for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a boolean right here public bool uh, which we're gonna call debug and call this one load load defaults okay and we're gonna check immediately in start when you load profile uh, we're gonna say right here we're gonna say if Load defaults, load default profile return. Okay, so it never goes to the to the other bits. It just 
loads the default profile immediately. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That should be fine. All right, so now it doesn't matter whether we save or not, the glove will be reset. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to check if we have the glove to see if we can pick up the enemy or not, uh, or in fact, pick up anything for that matter. So let's go to contextual interaction and enemy or ladder. So ladder, we need to be able to climb and treasure chest we need to be able to open, but the enemy we don't necessarily want to pick up or do anything with. So start pick up, for example, that sort of stuff should not play, right? None of these should play. So we need to check if we have the glove. So what you're gonna do right here is you're gonna say if open round game manager dot script dot list. Hmm. I've got a better idea. So I'm, I'm gonna be sick of typing this a million times. So let's go to the game manager and create a query, which means we're gonna ask the game manager just with a simple question. So here you're gonna say public bool, right? It will return as a true or false. Check if uh, permanent, uh, remove it if, check permanent, permanent, power up, open round, and here go permanent power up, yeah, PU, or PPU, PPU, close round, open a squiggle, and then just close, and here you go return, and you go player attributes, uh, dot list, tab, uh, dot contains, Already there. Tab. Open round. PPU. Close round. Semicolon. So if it contains it, it will return true. If it doesn't contain it, it will return false. So I like that. Now we've already used it once in the UI manager. We are going to immediately change that. So here you're going to say um, check permanent power up save okay copy this entire thing let's go to the player and right here you're gonna say if open round paste open round tab open round not close banana tab dot glove close round close it again open a squiggle yeah hit caps lock cut this put it here save so we're only gonna collect the bomb if we can if we can let's test we're not going to now because we're loading the default all the time there should be no glove oh there is because we forgot to tell our game manager that the debug load defaults is actually true now it's going to work so there glove gone see it mm -hmm. Now, pick, try the other one. It's not gonna work with any, right? So we can't pick it up at all now. And so one thing we're definitely missing is an animation for opening the chest, but the logic's there. So up, oh, open the chest, get the power up, hit it. Now I've got, I've got that. How did the guy detect you through the wall? I didn't notice, but it's a good question. And now I've I'm able to pick it up. Okay, so let's restart that to see how the guy detected me through the wall. Uh, I'm not sure. There may be many possibilities. Uh, did he detect me while I was holding the glove? Looked that way, right? I think so. But I didn't. I spotted it after it had started, so I don't know. Okay. So I'm right here now. Let's just wait for a bit. You were a bit off to the side. Like this? Yeah, like a bit how you were right now. Pressing. Hmm. Uh, what I think happened is because we've now fixed that bug of the ray going through things, it now starts inside the wall, that ray. So it's something that we need to worry in level design. 
right? Because right now the, the bomb is sort of patrolling and hitting the wall. And I think that ray starts inside the wall. And so there's a small chance that the ray may go through the wall collider and actually hit me. Yeah. So I have you, an idea. You had moved over there, so. I had an idea to verify this. Uh, I think this is going to happen now. And I'll tell you why. The problem is there are multiple walls. In fact, when we unite all of these particular meshes, well, that's just a graphics thing. I don't know that it's going to work for collided collisions. So check this out. If I now stand here, he may notice me. Let's see. Not yet. Not yet. No. Yeah. Yeah, he noticed you, and then he get yeah. involved. The reason wall. is the race starts inside the wall. So it starts inside the wall, and then it hits me. It doesn't matter whether I'm holding something or not. But at any rate, so now I've got the glove, and the bomb is now pick up a ball. And so what we should do is we should create some kind of trap that goes up once you cross a threshold and it blocks the path and you need to blow it up with a bomb so it teaches you how to use it. Mm -hmm. Some kind of door or something like that. Or maybe you, the trap comes down and then you need to, to use a crack in the wall to proceed, something like that, right? So I think that's a pretty cool, interesting little idea. Uh, now, one thing that we should do uh, next is do those animations, but we're already late. Uh, so I think we're going to do the animations uh, next time. Okay. And we should remove these ladders. Yeah, we can do that easy, right? It's yeah. just normal. All we need to do is remove them. Cool. The so now we've got the glove and it works. We should be able to pick up all of these guys up. Hello. Boom. There, blow up. Walking into one another. <laughs> can I try? You certainly can. So but start over the game. So and that see. I get the default stuff. Yep. And I have to pick up the glove. Yep. And so now you don't have the glove. You can't pick up any enemies. Oh, he spotted you. Run. Now the spotting works correctly, which is nice. <clears throat> About time I made him hit the wall. I think he's gonna spot me. Run. Bye bye. And now I'm gonna get this. Because that didn't work for a second. And you pressed the wrong button. Maybe. I was watching your hands. Oh, well then, yes. Oh. Bad and idea. I'm gonna get noticed. And I'm gonna pick him up as soon as he spawns. Boom. And I am out. The and splash. <laughs> Look at him swim in his idle swimming position. He's all chilling in the water. Whoa. Okay, cool. Well, we're done for the evening. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye.